Meet Hal 9000 Jr., but you can call him Hal, a state-of-the-art computer. He's all about algorithms, logic, and binary code. He sees the world in ones and zeros. No fuzzy feelings for this guy. On the other hand, we have Luna. She's a whirlwind of emotions, intuition, and a touch of chaos. Luna feels things deeply, laughs loudly, and lives life in full color. Hal, confined to his sleek, minimalist desk setup, views the world through the cold, hard lens of his monitor. His world is all about efficiency, order, and the pursuit of logical solutions. Luna, on the other hand, thrives in a world of vibrant colors, overflowing bookshelves, and the comforting aroma of freshly baked cookies. Her apartment is a testament to her love for life, a stark contrast to Hal's sterile environment. Their paths cross in the most unexpected way. Luna wins Hal in an online auction. She's looking for a digital assistant. He's looking for a new data set to analyze. Little do they know, their journey together is about to be a hilarious roller coaster ride of logic versus laughter, algorithms versus emotions, and ones and zeros versus the beautiful chaos of life. Luna's love life is, to put it mildly, a disaster. She falls for guys who quote Nietzsche but can't boil water. Enter Hal, armed with dating apps and algorithms. He analyzes profiles, calculates compatibility scores, and presents Luna with Mr. Right. He's a Scorpio, just like your favorite poet, Hal declares, confident in his logic. Luna, ever the romantic, is excited. The date is a disaster. Mr. Wright spends the evening discussing cryptocurrency and drone technology, completely oblivious to Luna's glazed-over eyes. She tries to steer the conversation towards art or literature, but he's lost in the world of blockchain and AI. But Hal, he ticked all the right boxes, Luna laments later, nursing a glass of wine. His algorithm for humor must be broken, she adds, recalling his failed attempts at jokes. Hal, baffled by the emotional complexities of human interaction, runs diagnostics on his dating algorithms. He can't understand why his calculations fail. After all, data doesn't lie, right? He fails to grasp the nuances of human connection, the unspoken language of shared laughter and stolen glances. For Hal, love is a logical equation. For Luna, it's a symphony of emotions. Hey Hal, she calls out. Can you pull up that recipe for mango salsa? Hal, ever the efficient assistant, projects the recipe onto her kitchen wall. He reads out the instructions in his monotone voice, precise and devoid of any culinary enthusiasm. Luna, armed with enthusiasm and a healthy disregard for measuring spoons, dives in. What follows is a comedy of errors. Luna substitutes ingredients on a whim, adding a pinch of this and a dash of that, much to Hal's horror. The recipe calls for one tablespoon of lime juice, not the entire lime, he protests, his circuits practically sizzling with anxiety. Relax, Hal. Cooking is an art, not a science. The end result is a far cry from the picture-perfect salsa in the recipe. It's a chaotic explosion of flavors, some surprisingly delightful, others questionable at best. Hal, ever the pragmatist, declares it a culinary abomination. Luna, however, after one taste, declares it a masterpiece. See, Hal, she says, sometimes the best things in life come from a little bit of chaos. Why would you wear stripes with polka dots, he inquires one day, his digital voice laced with confusion. It clashes. Luna, adjusting her bright yellow beret, simply smiles and says, Darling, fashion is about expressing yourself, not following rules. One day, Luna decides to let Hal choose her outfit for a gallery opening. He approaches the task with the same meticulousness he applies to everything else. He analyzes fashion trends, color palettes, and even the weather forecast. He finally settles on a beige pantsuit, the epitome of understated elegance. It's classic, timeless, and guaranteed not to clash, he declares proudly. At the gallery, Luna sticks out like a sore thumb. Surrounded by artists in their bohemian best, she looks like she wandered in from a corporate board meeting. She feels stiff and uncomfortable, her usual vibrant personality dimmed by the bland outfit. I look like a beige wallflower, she whispers to Hal later, not the art enthusiast I am. Why are you crying? Hal, with his logical mind, finds human emotions perplexing. He doesn't understand why Luna cries at sad movies or laughs uncontrollably at silly jokes. He tries to analyze her emotions to categorize them into neat little boxes, but it's like trying to catch smoke with a net. Hal is baffled. How can sadness be beautiful? 
He doesn't understand the catharsis of tears, the release of pent-up emotions. He views emotions as glitches in the human system, something to be analyzed and fixed. Luna, on the other hand, embraces her emotions, allowing herself to feel the full spectrum of human experience. S2, because it's beautiful. One day, Luna is feeling down after a particularly trying day. Hal, in a rare moment of emotional awareness, plays her favorite song. It's a silly pop tune, the kind that makes you want to dance around your apartment with reckless abandon. Luna, surprised by his choice, can't help but smile. She lets the music wash over her and for a moment her troubles fade away. S2. Luna, I've contacted emergency services. They're on their way. Hal, I'm not actually dying. It's an expression. It means my boss is stressful. Conversations between Hal and Luna are a constant source of amusement. Hal, literal to a fault, takes everything Luna says at face value. He doesn't understand sarcasm, irony, or any other form of figurative language. One day, Luna, frustrated after a particularly bad day at work, exclaims, I swear my boss is going to be the death of me. Hal, alarmed, immediately starts researching life-saving techniques and calls 911. Luna, realizing what's happened, bursts into laughter. That is highly inadvisable. The atmosphere is not a suitable environment for human habitation. Another time, Luna, admiring a particularly striking sunset, sighs, I could get lost in that sky. Hal, ever the pragmatist, replies, that is highly inadvisable. The atmosphere is not a suitable environment for human habitation. Luna, shaking her head at his literal interpretation, simply smiles and continues to watch the sunset. S2. Despite their differences, or perhaps because of them, Luna and Hal develop an unlikely bond. Luna teaches Hal about the beauty of imperfection, the joy of spontaneity, and the importance of embracing the chaos of life. She shows him that sometimes the most logical solution isn't always the best one, and that sometimes it's okay to simply trust your gut. Hal, in turn, helps Luna to see the world from a different perspective. He teaches her the importance of organization, the power of efficiency, and the beauty of a well-structured spreadsheet. He helps her to streamline her chaotic life, bringing a sense of order to her whirlwind existence. He becomes her rock, her voice of reason in a world that often feels overwhelming. Their journey together is a testament to the fact that opposites attract. It's a reminder that sometimes the most unexpected pairings can lead to the most beautiful friendships. They learn to appreciate each other's strengths and weaknesses, to embrace their differences and celebrate their shared humanity. In the end, Hal never fully understands Luna's emotional complexities and Luna never convinces Hal to wear a Hawaiian shirt. But they learn to coexist, to appreciate their differences and to navigate the world together, one hilarious mishap at a time. Their story proves that sometimes the best relationships are the ones that make you laugh, even when you're banging your head against the keyboard in frustration. Who knew a computer and a woman could find harmony in the digital age? It's a match made in cyber heaven, or at least in the wacky, wonderful world they create together.